Hello, the Gentleman Gamer here, and I am in a Magnetar wormhole. That looks nice, doesn't it? Beautiful. Now, my plan today for the video was to make a video on the, uh, the effects of a Magnetar wormhole on your ship. Um, but uh, since CCP Fozzie put out the dev blog um, for I the Hyperion release, which apparently has a huge amount of changes to wormhole space and to the wormhole effects for each type of system. I changed my plan, uh, which was before was to make a vid uh, one video uh, you know, for each type of wormhole system. But since he's changing them all, uh, or tweaking them, uh, I decided to wait. Wait till after the high PR release, and then I'll do the video on, uh, on the wormhole effects. But, but since I'm here anyway, I decided to do a different video today, um, and I'll use this as my my backdrop, we'll say, put it right about here, and I was going to go through the dev blog a little bit and uh, talk about it, and the dev blog is, Into the Known Unknowns, Wormhole Updates and Hyperion Release. Oh, okay, and there, I thought this part was interesting too, if you put Ever, you do plan to read that blog, it's pretty interesting. When they, um, CCP actually put wormhole space into the game, they actually had a plan for how players would actually use it. <laughs> and then uh, when they put it into the game, the uh, wormhole players, the people who eventually became the wormhole uh, residents, uh, played it completely differently. <laughs> so uh, that, was, that was pretty funny. So now these are the changes they're proposing here. They're, of course, trying. They we will uh, rebalance the wormhole effects in each, each of the systems. I think all of them are getting tweaks, some more than others. So, like black holes and cataclysm variables, will get a lot more, I think. Um, and this, and I, I won't be going over the wormhole rebalance uh, effects right now. Uh, I think it will take a lot longer, make the video a lot longer than it really should be. And I do plan making videos in the future, so I'll let that one slide for now. If you want to read it, though, that blog is on uh, the EVE Online website. Uh, the other one, I, will, I will be talking about the static class 4, second static for the class 4 wormholes, um, the more randomly spawning wormholes, uh, the controversial mass-based spawn distance after wormhole jumps, uh, and the K162 appearance only on the first jump. And apparently they're also loosening bookmark copying restrictions, which I didn't think this was a problem, but apparently is a problem. So we'll uh, go by these uh, these numbers real quick. And now for the class fours, which uh, um, they have this graph and it shows how underused it is. Um, they want to add a second static to it, which which means a, a second wormhole. Uh, static wormholes uh, to the class 4 system and they're, tr they're they're hoping this will make it like a a hub type wormhole system where um, you have a lot of lot, a good amount of access to other other wormhole systems in wormhole space so they're hoping this will revive the usage of it because right now no one's really using it so Hopefully that does the, the trick. Uh, some people, uh, most people I listened to thought this is a really good idea. So hopefully this does the trick and it makes World Class 4 usable again, or more, at least more valuable to people. Um, the next change is more in new randomly spawning wormholes. Now, uh, the first part of this change, there'll, there'll be significantly increase in the spawn rate of all existing wormholes that originate in wormhole space. Which sounds great, right? You know, so hmm, that's the explorer. More wormholes me to scan down and use to move around New Eden. So the more the better, I figure. And for wormholers, you know, it gives us some variety um, to their to their uh, to their travel. So they can find it random spawning wormholes in their system, and that way they can get uh, into different areas without having rely on their statics. But they're also adding a new class of worm, random wormholes, um, which has different properties. 
Now, the new class will, um, is pretty much made for frigates and destroyers and multi-bubble heavy interdictors. Um, now, no, that doesn't sound, that sounds pretty cool, right? You know, have a wormhole that's made for frigates, so, as an explorer again, uh, another wormhole I can use to move around New Eden. Sounds fantastic, right? But I think, what I read here, they designed it more for wormhole, um, wormhole corporations to use them with their frigate gangs that they like to uh, roam around in Nullsec and other parts of wormhole space with. And these wormholes will be pretty much designed to do that, facilitate that. So, uh, sounds like a very good idea. Now, the problems that wormhole, wormhole people have with this type of wormhole they're suggesting, and no, the the, the 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 small ship wormhole idea, they don't, they're fine with, what I understand. It's the regenerating mass over time, which they don't like. Um, some think it will lead, like lead slippery slope type argument, lead to wormhole stabilizers, which I guess in theory would mean that wormholes will never close. Um, now I'm not. I'm not sure if CCP plans on making anything like that, um, but uh, I think the practical thing about the regenerating mass over time means that it would be very difficult to close them on purpose. Um, so they'll most likely last the whole time. Uh, so I, I don't know. If, I think a lot of the wormholes think it's 50-50 good idea, but it sounds like a great idea. And I think it will add a lot more mobility to wormhole space. So hopefully they can uh, figure out a, a compromise maybe for this, but we'll see. Now another one, which is the actually more the most controversial I think change that they're proposing, is adding uh, a mass-based spawn distance after wormhole jumps. Now currently, when you jump into a wormhole and you spawn on the other side, it's like a, a, a the same distance for each ship. So if you're in an orca or or a, like a frigate, you, you pretty much land about 3k or 2k away from it. Um, but with this change, they want to like add a mass variable to it. So the higher your mass, the farther you'll spawn away. And when you jump, when you exit out of the after you jump. Now some people, I mean, uh, wormhole wormholders use. Uh, uh, orcas and bigger ships to intentionally close a hole. Um, that way, uh, they're static ones, so another one will spawn and give them uh, different uh, different connections from that new wormhole after they intentionally close the old one. And presently, it's easy now. You warp an orca or some other big ship to the static, and you jump in, and then you jump. You you immediately jump back out or jump through it again. And then the mass of the orca usually, depending, they can calculate it with you know, plates or uh, micro-warp drives on, and that will close the hole and the new static will spawn. Um, but this will make it harder to do that with an orca, because orcas are big and they're slow, even with micro-warp drives they're slow, and if they're spawning 11.7 km, then they might take a few minutes to close it compared to you know a few seconds, like they do now. Now, um, I, I personally, I think, you know, I don't live in wormhole space, so for me, I'm mostly flying a covert ops frigate, and won't change much for me. Um, 5.5 uh, km is, you know, fine. But people who live in it, I uh, think this might be a big issue, because they're used to uh, rage rolling, as they call it. Rage rolling uh, wormhole, con uh, wormhole connections. Um... But hopefully, I think I think this adds a a bit of element of risk to closing a hole, and adds some more uh, strategy as well for like for people uh, actually give them time to react to someone trying to close the connection. So I think this this would be a good change as long as the the randomly spawning wormholes as read above are significant enough to. Um, uh, to actually be used as connections to other parts of normal space. And if that's significant enough, then they won't have to um, 
rage roll their uh, their their static so often. So, but it's been hotly debated right now, and people are are still talking about it. So, well, I guess we'll find out in the coming weeks if uh, if it does go through, or they're gonna have to make some sort of compromise for it. But we'll see. Now the next one changes to K one six two signature appearance. I act didn't I didn't under, um, didn't notice how it's actually how it works. Uh, this is kind of news to me. So apparently, I thought when I see a wormhole on my I have I scanned in a wormhole, I thought, well, if I can see it, that means the people on the other side can see it as well. But it's not true. Apparently, when you scan down a K one six two wormhole. The other, the exit only spawns when you warp to it. Right. I didn't know that you, that that's how it worked. And apparently, some people in um, wormhole space thought that gave people on the other side way too much advanced warning of a possible, you know, um, uh, a possible uh, intruder into their space, uh, for lack of a better word. So now uh, they're proposing a change to it. So, so the the exit won't actually appear on your scanner until after someone jumps through it. So that gives the people on the other side a lot less warning that someone might be coming through. Now I thought initially thought this is well, okay. They're trying to make it easier for someone to uh, be aggressive against another another corporation or group of players. But uh, I was watching the Lone Wolf uh, video on the wormhole changes. And he had a different perspective on the matter. It could also this this uh, change can be used defensively as well. If you scan down a, a K162 wormhole, and you know you don't want no one uh, the exit opening up, then all you have to do is not jump through it. So it can be used both ways, it seems. So it seems like it seems like a very interesting uh, you have an interesting little play there on. Uh, an aggressive and also defensive use of the same proposed mechanic. So um, it seems pretty cool. I uh, I wonder how it's going to pan out though. And the last one is loosening of bookmark copying restrictions. Now I thought you could already do this already. I don't know why I thought it, but I thought you could already do this already. So the final change is a bit more focused, but still be interest the most formal residents. Over the years, we've implemented certain restrictions to bookmark copying. Copying. This has been historically have been a major source of database load for Eve. At this point, after many other gameplay changes, formal residents are most common users of bookmark copying system, and the request was passed to us with the CSM to investigate loosening the restrictions around this activity. We've done some investigation, and it appears that we can safely reduce these restrictions. So as the IP are released, you'll be able to copy more bookmarks at once, and the operation should complete significantly more quickly. We can continue to investigate loosening restrictions further if the first set changes works out well. While you wait for us to finish the ongoing work, we will be able to enable the long requested alliance bookmarks. This should at least be a helpful change to tide you over. Oh, so okay, apparently before they had restrictions on us to reduce the database load for Eve, and now they're loosening them up, which will be a lot pretty useful for um, worm, uh, wormhole corporations because since they use you know sharing bookmarks and stuff it, it saves a lot of work so and that seems to be the end of the dev blog and these changes seem pretty interesting and hopefully they actually get to some of these implemented so we can see how they pan out on actually on the, the main server here on TQ and uh, Hopefully, uh, getting some mystery and some uh, excitement back into wormhole space. I think uh, that will be the end of the video here, I think. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Fly safe and fly brave.